There are some vehicles we just rarely see, some so much so that you'll probably never actually look at them up close in your lifetime. Only 36 250 GTOs were built, and amazingly, all 36 still survive today. So today is your lucky day. These cars are usually kept as collectibles, sometimes shown off at shows and museums, but they don't often make it to the streets. Every car on this list has two things in common. They're made in impressively low production numbers, and they're some of the most costly and custom vehicles on the planet. 15 rarest and most expensive cars of all time. The Spirit of Nemo Car Set in an alternate version of the late 19th century, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is a unique movie featuring an odd assortment of legendary fictional Victorian characters who join up to foil the Phantom who's trying to start a war. And Captain Nemo's Nautilus car is the real star of the movie, of course entirely custom made for the production. To the front, on either side of a vast decorative radiator grill, is two representations of Ganesha, the Hindu deity. The elephant motif is repeated on the door handles. Other panels and sections all over the car feature carvings of gods and symbols, finished in a gold color faux finish to look aged and weathered. It's intricate moldings and decorations throughout. The owner of a body shop in West End, North Carolina is behind Spirit of Nemo, a replica, his take on possibly the most challenging movie car of all time, this 24-foot-long convertible. Normally, when someone builds a movie car, the result is a lot like a typical concept car. Good from afar, but far from good. But the Spirit of Nemo stands up to close scrutiny. It's a beautifully executed car, but it took 6,500 hours to complete, and guess what? It went on sale on eBay. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Rolls-Royce Boat Tail If you're interested in this ridiculously opulent Rolls-Royce Boat Tail, a fan of its owners, Jay-Z and Beyonce, or just curious about the lifestyles of the super rich, this is the car for you. The Boat Tail is quite a sensory feast. The latest project by Rolls-Royce is one of only three commissioned nautical-inspired custom-built motor cars. The car was designed by the company's specialized coach build division, reinterpreting the 1910's Rolls-Royce boat tail car design. It draws aesthetic inspiration from yachts of the 1920s and 1930s. At the rear, the sailing boat theme becomes clear. With a press of a button, the deck opens in a theatrically sweeping butterfly form to reveal an intricate hosting suite complete with a champagne chest, two bottles of bubbly, caviar, the works. Finally, cocktail tables open on either side of the deck, providing access to a couple of picnic stools. Rolls-Royce has unveiled a few limited runs of some very rare and special cars. This one is by far the ultimate. The boat tail we see here is the first to be born out of this new venture with an estimated price of around $28 million, although naturally due to the client's privacy, the maker won't confirm this. Rolls-Royce is an absolute staple of the luxury car market. They've developed a reputation for making extremely comfortable and luxurious pieces of engineering. <laughs> Pagani Zonda HP Barchetta Stepping into Pagani's showroom is like stepping into a museum. The cars are pristine, on pedestals and roped off. Touching is not allowed, but all other senses are amplified by the immaculate beauty of the Pagani lineup. Each car is built to order. There's no mass production. Now comes the most prolific examples of the Pagani supercar dynasty, the Zonda HP Barchetta, as the most expensive car in the world. However, only three are being made and none are available. The Zonda HP Barchetta boasts a 6.0-liter bi-turbo V12 on board with 789 bhp. It's matched to a six-speed manual gearbox along with a mechanical locking diff and rear-wheel drive. A neat touch is what these monster brakes hide behind. The 20-inch front and 21-inch rear forged aluminum wheels have different color inlays left and right. It's all about details with Pagani. The most striking aspect, aside from the price and the fact that Zonda still exists in some form, is that body. Gorgeous, isn't it? The rear wheel fairings are made from carbon fiber. It gets a roof scoop, but no actual roof. 
Instead, you'll see a wraparound windscreen, allowing you the freedom to contemplate your exclusive purchase. <laughs> Bugatti La Voiture Noire It's hard to believe, but the Bugatti La Voiture Noire is no longer the most expensive new car ever. That doesn't make this hypercar any less impressive. It's a modern-day interpretation of John Bugatti's Lost Type 57 SC Atlantic and took two years to develop. Some 65,000 engineering hours have been invested to finalize the Chiron-based unique creation, which has completely bespoke bodywork and an extended wheelbase. Then there are the headlights, with more than 25 individually milled elements in each cluster. The front grille has been 3D printed, with the ultra-wide LED light strip at the back boasts a single-piece surround with no joints, a first for Bugatti. La Voiture Noire is more than just a Chiron with new clothes as aside from the stretched wheelbase, additional modifications were implemented. It has different cooling and wheels. It was perfected in the wind tunnel and test benches, but also out in the open on test tracks and proving grounds at various speeds. The LVN features a custom body with visible carbon fiber surfaces and a clear coat known as Black Carbon Glossy. Bugatti claims the special finish generates virtually no reflections, but plenty of tension and drama. It certainly looks the part. <laughs> SSC Tuatara This car takes inspiration from the aerospace industry, and the Tuatara is named after the reptile found only in New Zealand known for having the fastest molecular evolution of any living animal. This car has a lot to live up to. The fighter jet-like SSC Tuatara has recently become the world's fastest production car. The hypercar, which is still street legal, has been fitted with a dramatic aero package which consists of a large frontal splitter, frontal dive plane, directionally vanned side rockers, vertical stabilizer, augmented diffuser, a high downforce fixed wing, and an active rear wing. The splitter, dive plane, and side rockers combine to balance out the downforce, with 45.4% applied to the front and 54.6% to the back. Thanks to these changes, the speed machine can produce 1,100 pounds of downforce at 160 miles per hour, three times more than before. The car has a carbon fiber body construction with aluminum crumple zones and incorporates active aerodynamics, and recently, a Tuatara reached a one-way speed of 295 miles per hour over the course of 2.3 miles at Space Florida's launch and landing facility, verified by two speed measurement systems as well as a racing technician on hand. <laughs> Rolls-Royce Sweptail Rolls-Royce unveiled a one-off custom build called the Sweptail. At a reported price of nearly $13 million, it's believed to be one of the most expensive new cars ever commissioned. This bespoke one-off coupe was built for one of Rolls-Royce's most valued customers and is the automotive equivalent of haute couture. The front grille of the unique motor car is also unique by itself and is the largest fitted to any modern era Rolls-Royce giving it a distinct look. It's milled from a single piece of aluminum and hand polished to give it a mirror shine. On the rear end is the swept tail that gives the car its name. The coupe de gras of the rear is the ultimate homage to the world of racing yachts that inspired the client with its raked stern. The back seat is replaced with a wood mid shelf that features an illuminated glass lip. Further back is the wood hat shelf polished and inset with luggage rails and surrounded by a large teardrop shaped glass roof that contributes to a very bright airy cockpit. On the inside, the cabin is predictably wrapped in opulence. The center console also houses a mechanism that serves up a bottle of champagne and two crystal champagne flutes. The swept tail comes with its own set of luggage as well. Mercedes-Benz W196 The Mercedes-Benz W196 was a Formula One racing car produced for the 1954 and 1955 Formula One season. It won 9 of 12 races entered and captured the only two world championships in which it competed. And since then, this car is iconic. The Mercedes-Benz W196 was designed by an engineer who worked with Mercedes since the 1930s. They designed two versions of this race car. The first one was streamlined for the faster tracks, while later Mercedes introduced a version with exposed wheels for the technically more demanding circuits. Many new elements and technologies were used, and this car was probably a step beyond its rivals. 
first included the use of desmadronic valves and mechanical direct fuel injection adapted from a high-performance engine used on a fighter jet during World War II. Interestingly, Mercedes withdrew from competitive racing and did not return for another three decades. With nine wins out of 12 Grand Prix starts, Mercedes-Benz and its W196 went into history as one of the finest cars in the early ages of F1. And in 2013, one was sold at an auction for over $20 million, which was a record fee at the time. <laughs> 1956 Aston Martin DBR1 Prior to 1956, World Sports Car Championship regulations insisted that competing cars had to be road legal. It was intended to stop manufacturers from building thinly disguised race cars and barely civilizing them for highway use. The road legal regulation was relaxed soon after, and Aston Martin embraced this new freedom to create the DBR1, intended for the World Sports Car Championship as well as non-championship sports car races at the time. The body evolved from the DB3S's shape, featuring a much lower profile. Most notable was that the back of the front wheel was no longer left open. Instead, the DBR1 featured full bodywork with a large triangular vent on the side, a design trait that would become standard on all future Aston Martins. It's one of the only three cars in the 1950s to win two championships in the same year. In addition, the six World Sports Car Championship victories were a record for any car in the 1950s and remained a record in the championship until surpassed by the Ferrari 250TR. The three consecutive triumphs in 1959 equaled the record set by the Ferrari 250TR with its three consecutive victories at the start of the 1958 season. And in 2017, a DBR1 was sold for a world record price for a British-made car $22.5 million. US dollars. <laughs> Lamborghini Countach LPI 800 For the first time in the history of Lamborghini supercars, the storied company from Italy revived a nameplate for a new vehicle. It's not just any nameplate either. The Countach is arguably the exotic car that created the supercar segment. And now, after 30 years, it lives again. You can't have a Lamborghini Countach without a V12, and this one has it in spades. The Countach LPI 800 cranks out 599 kilowatts to all four wheels through a seven-speed gearbox. Lamborghini says it reaches 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, 124 miles per hour in 8.6, and if you never lift, wind resistance will stop you at 221 miles per hour. It's easily the quickest, fastest Countach ever. Sticking with styling, the cleaner lines of early Countach serve as the primary inspiration for this reboot. The nose is properly flat, and while it doesn't sport pop-up headlights, designers added depressions behind the headlights that mimic the old lenses. On the sides, arrow-shaped scallops in the doors merge with massive side intake to mimic the original Countach. And of course, those are scissor doors. Now for the million-dollar question, and we mean that literally. Lamborghini hasn't said how much the new Countach will cost, but rumors say it's over a million bucks. <laughs> Ferrari 250 GTO The Ferrari 250 GTO was produced by Ferrari from 1962 to 1964. GTO stands for Gran Turismo Homologato, Italian for Grand Touring Homologated. Just 36 of these GTOs were manufactured. When new, the 250 GTO cost $18,000 in the United States, with buyers personally approved by Enzo Ferrari and his dealer for North America. This model has since become highly desired by automobile collectors and sales have repeatedly set price records. From the late 1970s to the late 1980s, classic car values rose rapidly and the 250 GTO became the most valuable Ferrari model, touted as the Ferrari that most completely embodies the characteristics of the manufacturer. Prices fell substantially during the car market crash of the early 1990s. But that all changed. The current record for the world's most expensive car was set in 2018, when a 1963 250 GTO was sold in private sale for $70 million. This particular 1963 250 GTO won the Tour de France the year after it was built and got its record price tag through never having crashed in its 55-year lifespan. Its racing history made the 250 GTO's uncrashed status all the more remarkable. Hmm. Lamborghini Veneno Roadster 
Lamborghini recently revealed one of the most exceptional super sports cars of all time. The Veneno Roadster is an open racing prototype with an extreme design and breathtaking performance, and it's one of the world's most exclusive automobiles. Every detail of its form pursues a clear function, exceptional dynamics, optimum downforce with minimal drag, and perfect cooling of the high-performance engine. The Veneno Roadster accelerates from 0 to 60 in just 2.9 seconds, and its top speed stands at 220 miles per hour. It's extreme and guarantees an intense driving experience because open means truly open. There's no roof, just a strong rollover bar for optimum safety. The design is focused on optimum aerodynamics and stability through fast corners, with handling akin to that of a racing prototype. Yet, it's fully road legal. Therefore, the Veneno Roadster is unmistakably a Lamborghini. It sticks firmly to the consistent design philosophy of all the super sports cars. That includes the extreme proportions, as well as the powerfully arrow-shaped front end and the interplay between razor-sharp lines and precise surfaces. The Lamborghini Veneno Roadster takes the aerodynamic efficiency of a racing prototype onto everyday roads. 1998 McLaren F1 LM There are McLarens, and then there are McLaren F1s. This is the latter, the penultimate standard F1, since upgraded by the factory to LM specification. And you can buy it. The F1 LMs can be identified by their papaya orange paint. They were painted in this color in memory and tribute to Bruce McLaren, whose race color was papaya orange. Of the production run of six, five F1 LMs were sold and the sixth, the papaya orange prototype, was retained by McLaren and used as the platform for the continued development of the F1 chassis. McLaren designed the standard F1 as an ultimate road car in the sense that it strives to be comfortable and usable in everyday conditions despite being a potent sports car. However, the LM Edition is a lower-end, stiffer, track-oriented vehicle with a bare interior and solid aluminum bushings in place of the rubber bushings in the suspension system and without the ground plane shear center system on the standard F1. And this is no stripped-out special either. That's part of what makes it the ultimate F1. The de-restricted engine and track-ready bodywork were combined with all the creature comforts and then some. But given the last time this thing was up for sale, it brought $13.7 million, count on a new McLaren sum being duly outrageous. <laughs> Rolls-Royce Vision Rolls-Royce provides a glimpse into the future in the form of the spectacular and fully autonomous Vision concept. It's gigantic, 19.4 feet long. Everything about it is extreme in scale, from the unfathomably long front end to the vast expanses of glass and the massive half-concealed wheels. The mirror-like hood leads into a mirror-like greenhouse that offers a nearly unobstructed view from the interior. To say there's nothing understated about it is an understatement. As a fully electric vehicle, one electric motor drives the front wheels and another the rear. There's no engine beneath the bonnet. This space is put to use as the perch for a set of custom luggage that motors out from behind the front wheel for the valet to carry inside. Conceived as a personal retreat, the interior is minimalistic yet lavish. Riders sit on a two-seat couch upholstered in silk while their feet rest on a hand-twisted silk carpet. They face a full-width entertainment screen. A steering wheel and instruments would be completely superfluous, according to Rose, and indeed there are none at all, as all mobility functions are handled by the spirit of ecstasy, aka Eleanor, the car's AI computer. <laughs> Bugatti Royale The Bugatti Type 41, better known as the Royale, is a large luxury car built from 1927 to 1933. It's one of the largest cars in the world, 21 feet in overall length, and as you can see, it's one of the fanciest. The designer planned to build 25 of these cars and sell them to royalty as the most luxurious cars ever. But even royalty wasn't buying such things during the Great Depression, and Bugatti was able to sell only three of the seven made. Six still exist. One was destroyed in a wreck. The first prototype was built in 1926, but it was based on a longer wheelbase and a larger engine. It wasn't until 1932 that Bugatti sold the first Royale to a Parisian industrialist. Since the owner only wanted to drive his vehicle during the day, the Roadster did not have headlights. Giving it a more elegant look, three other vehicles with different bodies went into a customer's hands. Overall, a cabriolet, 
A Pullman limousine, a travel limousine with a folding top, and a two-door limousine were built in the few years to come. Each one of the six Royale vehicles can be considered one of the most exclusive and expensive vehicles in the world. If one of them were ever auctioned, it could be the most expensive car ever. Oldsmobile F88 The Oldsmobile F88 is one of the most historically significant vehicles of its era and is considered by many automotive historians to be a great expression of automotive design from the 1950s golden age. An experimental, high-performance, two-passenger sports convertible, the F88 was Oldsmobile's legendary dream car. A beautiful dynamo on wheels, the F88 was Oldsmobile's experimental convertible that GM stylists incorporated scores of striking innovations into. This spectacular sports car featured natural pigskin upholstery, low-poised fiberglass body, an unusual rear deck design, sparkling interior trim, and a special 250-horsepower rocket engine. The elliptical grille mouth, hockey stick side trim, and bullet tail lights were designed purely period Oldsmobile style. Unveiled at the General Motors Motorama in 1954 at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York, it was a true showstopper. For six days, the vehicle display and musical revenue ran. Following that, the Oldsmobile F88 became part of a series of traveling Motorama shows that caravaned by both bus and truck to Miami, LA, San Francisco, and Chicago. Over 2 million viewers saw the model. Only four cars were ever built, and one survives today and set a world record when auctioned in 2005 for $3.2 million. They're rare, they're expensive, and they're awesome. Even if you're not into cars, there's no denying that these specimens would rule the road if you saw one passing by you on the highway. But don't pass your opportunity to like and subscribe right now.